Uh, morning, folks, as you're uh, coming in, I see people logging in uh, now. Um, we'll, we'll just wait a minute or two until uh, quarter past nine and then we'll, we'll kick off. And um, if you have questions or or uh, or comments, you can see that there's a Q&A bar there that you would be able to access. Hey folks, um, let's uh, kick off. My name is Stephen Kinsella. I'm Professor of Economics and I'm head of the Department of Economics here at the University of Limerick. Um, I've been at the Kenny Business School for 16 years now and um, I have done a lot of work with the Business Studies Teachers Association of Ireland um, down those years and um, particularly with uh, Moreta Sullivan uh, and, and now uh, uh, Chloe um, and I'm very interested and excited about the Leaving Cert uh, research project. You may be significantly less excited and I understand why. Um, it can be a strange experience doing this research topic. It can be a little bit weird. Um, you're being asked to do um, a research project as, as part of the Leaving Certificate, which is itself a strange object. So, you know, it's kind of a stressful time. And I'm also aware that everybody um, who is listening to this, you know, if you're a fifth year, you have, you know, a year and 10 days. And if you're a sixth year, you have 10 days to get this in. Um, and so we really wanted to be as helpful as possible um, while um, while you're you're doing this. So um, the, the rules are quite simple. Um, we are recording this. So, um, you know, obviously be respectful of, and all of that. And um, there is a question and answer um, tab. So if you're um, if you're able to or if you're interested in asking questions just uh, click that and um, if you have other questions um, you can get in touch with me by email it's just first name name dot last name at ul dot ie um, uh, but uh, I think what we should do really is kick off um, so if we uh, have the first slide um, when um, they found out I, I was doing this, they said, you must tell everyone about our fantastic programs. So I said, OK, I will. Um, so if you're interested in doing these uh, the, these these courses and um, the big course we do is the Bachelor of Business Studies. It's 451 points last year. And then we've got the Bachelor of Arts and in International Business. That's 544 points. The basic idea of these is that they're they're big general courses. You do a bit of marketing bit of economics, bit of accounting, bit of bit of management, and then you find out what you like and then you kind of move off and improve uh, um, your, you know, concentrate your study into say economics or something like that over a couple of years. It's a brilliant degree. It's um, triple accredited, so we're one of the top 
120 business schools on earth so top one percent um business of business schools in the world um so you know we're very very proud of that and the degree that you do get from us is extremely good um and you can see here you know we've got uh, law and accounting you know financial maths and we've got technology management which is becoming ever more important as well and i give a bit of data there um, and we will be sharing these slides as well um so i think this, there's a link to the slides somewhere um we'll pop that into the chat for you um but that's the marketing bit done and you can click the links there's the, you know there's links to the courses and our prospect prospectus and stuff as well so there is the marketing spiel over if we can move to the next uh, slide please all right what's this talk about so for the next half hour or so i'm going to talk to two different audiences so for the fifth years who are submitting in about a year and 10 days what is research how to do it how to write your own research question how to think about structuring your answer do you need to cover everything? What's a good source and where to find reliable information? These are the questions that I'm getting over email. These are the questions that your teachers are, are, are asking everybody. And so it's really, really important that as you go through this, we, st uh, we start thinking about this. Um, so framing this problem, framing these concepts in a way that is useful to you and is 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 something that your teachers can help you um, uh, uh, get the best possible mark out of the leaving cert with. For the six years we were submitting in 10 days, there's nothing like a deadline. Uh, deadlines are amazing. They they clarify, they, 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 they make it clear what needs to happen. You become excited because you know you need to hit this thing. There's a, big, a bit of anxiety, a bit of stress. It's good to use those to get over the line. It's just an excellent thing. I love a deadline and uh, uh, um, I like I like having them imposed on me and I like imposing deadlines on others because it's a it's it's something that forces us to get things done in, in time. So for the for the ones submitting in 10 days, tips on writing revising and writing to be understood that's very very important and then I'll, I'll be here to answer your questions and comments you know i i'm assuming that lots of you are writing um uh, uh projects on you know inflation on the housing market on rental prices on uh, the effects of covid on uh, sugar taxes on you know other, other kinds of sin taxes stuff like that on decarbonization i'm sure you're writing loads of projects on all that kind of stuff and if that's the kind of thing you're interested in we'll be talking about this in the next sort of 27 minutes or so and i'll also be here for for questions until 10 o'clock because i know that's when you all need to head off and go to classes um and as i said there are a bunch of links in these slides that you can use you can click on you can you can uh, take away after this and hopefully they that will be useful for you as you go and produce uh, your um, your best possible effort and so we'll get into the, all of that in the next uh, slide please so first bit but we're five bits of this talk it's going to move pretty quickly what is research how do you do it how do you write your own research questions so I am a professor of economics it's my job to do research and I have been doing research since I was about 21 so you know 23 years or so so I have a reasonable uh, idea of what it is and it's completely natural for you to get a bit freaked out about the idea of the open-endedness of research um you know there's no defined answer uh, there's no right there's no wrong and that's because if we knew what the answer was it wouldn't be research the entire point about research is finding new things out next slide please so basically booth et al 2016 so you'll see this is a reference and a citation and you'll have to do those as part of your project so there's a reasonable uh, uh, first citation for you if you haven't seen something like this booth et al and um, uh, they have a beautiful book called the craft of research and if you google it you, you'll find you'll find uh, pdfs around the place um, and you can buy it i'm sure there's copies in your school library um they have a beautiful book it's, and it's what is research research is gathering information needed to answer a question that's what they define research as and if you read any parts of this book read chapters three and four it's amazing it's a beautiful book it's much older it's not relying on technology so much as th the process of thinking about having new ideas okay research is extremely important um you don't you know we, we're all living in a post-covid world um the vaccines that were developed that you know saved many 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 lives they were developed as, as part of a research project. Those vaccines and the technique to produce them did not exist 30 years ago. It, they exist today. And in 30 years time, new things will exist. And that's because of research where you have an idea and, and you gather information needed to answer a question. The question being like, can we make better vaccines? The answer is yes, if via this MINRA uh, process. Um, and one of the things that's important that you should understand is you live in a world where research by others determines 
most of what each of us believes about the world. So you may believe, for example, that there's an explosion of hate crime on Twitter. Well, why do you believe that? It turns out that comes from a research project. Um, you may believe uh, that um, during the war of uh, revolution uh, in, in, in France, that there were multiple war crimes on both sides. Well, how do you know that? You know that because a historian, who, the historian who wrote your textbook, um, read a research article about it where somebody uh, looked at the primary sources, the diary materials and so forth. Um, in economics, we do research looking at the big major trends in society, you know, what's happening to employment, what's happening to inflation, what's happening to um, uh, uh, other other aspects of the economy. But fundamentally, fundamentally, we we do research because we want to understand new things. OK, and if uh, uh, again, like I said, we'll be sharing these slides. Uh, there's a uh, uh, if you don't have time to read the the, the booth um, um, book itself, I've made a bunch of notes for you. Just click that link there and that'll take you to the to my notes for booth. Um, but I highly recommend you read the book. So why write research up? The first thing, the first reason we write research up is to remember when I'm doing research. So I have a bunch of postdoctoral fellows, so people who finished their PhD and who are working with me, and they're working on installing smart sensors all around Limerick to figure out how best to insulate the buildings to make those buildings better and uh, and more energy efficient and uh, uh, longer lasting and better for the people who live in there. Um, we have to document what we're doing in order that we can remember who went where, what happened, what was bought, what 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 were the sensor readings, where's the database of those and so forth. Um, and then when we've gathered all this data, we want to understand these things, okay? We really want to understand these things and that's key. That's really, really key. Um, we want to understand these trends. We want to understand do, you know, are Georgian buildings in Limerick uh, 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 better as uh, as heat, heat absorbers or is it uh, a more modern building and so on and so forth. OK, and then finally we do research to gain perspective. Was the, econ was the government's res economic response to COVID a good thing? or a bad thing? Do, what lessons can we learn the next time we have to do something like this? What's going to happen with uh, um, the influx of Ukrainian migrants that are arriving into into into, into Ireland? You know, uh, uh, can we gain perspective from the previous experience of other migration episodes and so on and so forth? This is why we do research. It, it makes you a more informed, a more reflective, a more uh, uh, balanced uh, uh, um, uh, judge of uh, things. Uh, sorry, I see a question from Josephine. Uh, the answer is yes, please. And can I have the next slide, please? So how to think about structuring your answer? Um, uh, the big thing here, the big thing here is you're being guided by the template to structure your answer, but that's only the write up phase. When you're thinking about structuring your answer, I want you to start thinking about your line of inquiry, right? So next slide, please. So. Any theme or line of inquiry, not inquiry, sorry, I got a typo there. Uh, inquiry has the same structured answer. OK, so you, 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 it's the same structured answer. You're asking a question of the world and you're giving an answer. So your question might be, what is the impact of households uh, of, 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 of you know, low and medium income households on uh, when inflation rises above 5%? OK, in Ireland in 2022, that could be a, a, a thing, right? Um, and you can you, your your line of inquiry is one line long. Just it's just literally one line long and I'm going to show you how to write it in a moment. Um, start thinking about research questions. Oh, sorry. Think about your audience. Who is your audience here? Is it the policymaker? Are you writing to Pascal Donoghue, who's the Minister for Finance? Are you writing to the Taoiseach? Are you writing to fellow students? Like who is your audience here? Are you writing to other to your teacher the, the 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 level of knowledge you need to assume is greater or lesser? The way you speak or the way you write has to be uh, 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 different. You know, if, if you're writing for the general audience, uh, it's not acceptable to say GDP because they very likely won't know it. And you can't even say gross domestic product. OK, if you're writing for the Minister of Finance, he definitely knows what gross domestic product is, right? So there's a level of assumed knowledge that you you can uh, you can either put in or, or not. My strong advice to you is if you use a term like GDP or inflation or anything like that, define it. Make sure you define it because it tells the examiner of this that you know what you're talking about. OK, so make sure you define it. And when you define it, 
reference it. We'll get to that in a minute. OK, so start thinking about research questions. The way you do research is either by looking at the scientific literature. So go to scholar.google.com and start looking at the scientific literature around inflation or house prices or something like that. Or you can start reading the paper. So just literally go and get a Sunday paper or go get the paper today. Open it up and start looking at topics. And maybe you'll find that housing is a big deal. Maybe you'll find that inflation is a big deal. Maybe you'll find that um, the geopolitical situation, the po what's the so-called polycrisis, is a big deal. It doesn't matter what you find. Whatever you find interesting is what you should do. And if you're saying, well, I'm not really that interested in any of it, what are you interested in? If you're interested in soccer, you, it's, it, th there's a big economic development at the moment. It's called the World Cup. It's a massive, massive deal in terms of sport, but it's also a massive deal in terms of economics and in, in, in fact, in terms of politics. So the things that interest you are the things that you should really push on. Research is a way of answering questions that you have about the world, not the other way around. So. Um, uh, what are the parts of your topic? So there's inflation, for example. There's cost push, pu cost push inflation. Uh, there's uh, demand pull inflation. There's all different types. There's theories of inflation. There's expectation augmented theories of inflation, wage bargaining theories, and so on and so forth. There's loads of different parts to this. There's and um, there there's the fact that it's mostly coming from energy. That's a big deal, right? And 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 you can identify these these parts. So there's a theoretical part, and then there's a data part. And look about how those in, interrelate, right? Look how how the theory suggests the data will change, and then compare the theory to the data and see what happens. Okay. So what are your parts of your topic? How do they relate to one another? How is the topic part of a larger system? So Ireland's inflation is not. Um, and divorced from the rest of the world? Obviously not. It's coming from outside. We don't have any real control over this. What are we going to do, right? And so it's very, very interesting. As you look at these things, you can start to see that one part changing over here changes some part over there. And that is gaining a, a deeper level of understanding of the world, which is exactly what you should want to do. OK, so it, 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 is this thing so part of a longer historical process? Um, you will find in economics the answer is almost certainly yes. And a big shout out to my colleague, Dr. Kieran Casey, uh, one of the country's best economic historians. He is going to be tracing the history of inflation um, uh, in the session exactly like this and exactly for you this Thursday at the same time. So Thursday, I believe quarter past nine to ten o'clock. Um, we'll send out the links uh, uh, afterwards and I hope you're all able to attend. But again, if you're not, we'll absolutely record it. So. Um, the, the, you, you can determine that the topic's value, what value does it reflect? You know, it, you might be very interested in the um, the evolution of the Batman character in comics, right? And there might be a real interest in that amongst a smaller group. But I think we can all agree that's probably not economically relevant and it's probably not significant to the degree that um, uh, uh, one would uh, uh, one would ask that question in, in 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 an economics project. It has to be something ba about basically built around microeconomics or macroeconomics. Macroeconomics being inflation, employment, uh, uh, output, um, the the structural changes in the economy, economic history, and so forth. And microeconomics being about individual policy changes. So what's the elasticity of demand with respect to housing? What's happening with sugar taxes? Uh, uh, what's happening with congestion charges? Should we have more greenways and so forth? Both levels are equally valid and it depends on what parts of things you're more interested in. So determining the value of the research and determining the value of your line of inquiry is is is, is something you should do with your teacher. Um, and uh, in the end, and I think this is probably the most important test for yourself, uh, is the topic useful, right? Can it overcome the question that a cynic would ask you, which is so what? You know, so what? So you, you've, writ you've written 1500 words about this thing. You spent a couple of weeks working on it. So what? What did you find? That's a very important question. And it's something that we're constantly asking our own students and our own research students here at the Kemi Business School. We're often asking them, can this pass the so what question? Because, you know, uh, the history of, you know, the evolution of Batman's cape is very interesting and all that, but it doesn't have any purchase on the minds of uh, those people who are struggling to heat their homes. Uh, and so in the end, while it might be interesting, I don't think it's useful. And so therefore you should maybe uh, confine that to a, a specialty interest. OK, next slide, please. Right, how do you do research well? 
the first thing is uh, um, you refine your line of inquiry. God, I'm really annoyed that I, I, I got the spelling wrong, um, <laughs> but I did, or maybe the spell check corrected it for me. So uh, you need to come up with the following sentence and everyone listening to this needs to do this, okay? You need to be able to say, I am studying X because I want to find out something, how, where, why, who, in order to do something about why, right? And we'll go through this in a minute. So I'm studying house prices in Dublin because I want to find out why they are rising so quickly in order to ensure that we can find out the mechanisms of supply and inform policymakers. That's a perfect first line. It's perfect. And the reason that it's perfect is the reader reads it and goes, I know exactly what this person wants to do. I'm really clear about what they're going to do. The topic is house prices. You're going to talk about supply. You, you're, you're talking about Dublin. You're talking about uh, policies. I get it. It's perfect. It's, it's, it's within a single step. You've moved, the, you've moved the debate forward for your reader. They know exactly what you want to do and everything else is you just spelling out your steps to get to that. OK, step three is the important thing. It's your claim on the reader's interests. Why are you doing this? You're doing this because you want to uh, substantiate a claim. You're making a claim that building more houses will result in prices going down. OK, that's a claim because there's a will in there. You know, there's a will. Um, uh, 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 there's, you're, you're making a claim about causality. Uh, if I kick the ball, it will go in the net. The will, there's causal uh, 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 power there. So um, you're, you're, you're saying, look, you, you want to read the work. You want they want you want the reader to read your work to get a sense of why this is important. And this structure gives you that. And so I urge you, even if you even if you're ten days away from doing this, redo the first so, first line of your piece with this. I guarantee you, you'll find a much more structured, much more linear path into your topic, and you'll be flying. You really, really will. Okay. Uh, don't bury the lead. The lead, L-E-D-E, -E, is a that, that that's a topic or a, a term from journalism. So the, the the burying the lead is is getting your point mixed up and leaving it in the middle, leaving it in the very middle of these, uh, uh, um, um, leaving it in the middle of of uh, uh, the the text. So the reader has to go dig for it, which of course they won't do. Get the thing up front. Get it right up front in your first or second paragraph. This is what's going on. I'm first. The first line is this is what I'm doing. I'm studying X in order to find out more about Y. Um, the the second thing I think has got to be my research has found that. Bah. Right. So be be a little bit bold. Be a little bit um, uh, uh, um, emphatic because you want to emphasize the most important part of your story or account or you, the, the write up of your research. Don't leave it at the bottom, stick it at the top because the reader wants to be like, oh, wow, OK, I see this. There's something interesting there and I really want to learn more about it. I want to I want to know more. Um, and once they're able to do that, you'll uh, you'll be flying. So uh, next uh, slide, please. So I went and I looked at the uh, uh, your, your research study. OK, and I've highlighted these 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 elements. These are the assessment criteria that um, that the assessors are going to have to go through to get a sense of your um, of the value of your research contribution. So high level achievement, the students report is purposeful and clear. If you do the line of inquiry thing, it will be purposeful and clear. Just figure out that sentence. I am studying X in order to do Y. Figure that out and you'll be fine, right? It's now purposeful and clear. Tick. The report is sufficiently detailed to provide concrete evidence of the student's knowledge and understanding. That means that you need to show that you understand that inflation is a thing. You need to understand the definition of inflation, a model of inflation, show data about inflation, and show the reader that you understand how these things are related. Okay, that's the key. Right. So it's detailed. In other words, you can't just write an old essay, you know, from a from an AI bot or whatever. It has to be very detailed and it has to provide concrete evidence. So you have to show data on inflation, the model. You have to show um, uh, uh, its effects from the central bank and so forth. 
and it moves beyond a mere retelling of facts and information to focus on insights and learning gain. So what did you learn? So you, it's not enough to just slap down a graph about inflation. You have to say, this is what I learned about it. This is what's important going forward. This is this is how I, how this research has changed my view of the world. There's a reflection piece, as you all know. OK, students demonstrate an ability to research. Yes, select, organize and process information. This is the key to becoming a researcher. It's all about um, um, being able to select the spurious uh, uh, from the important and just chuck the spurious and just really see what's important. OK, they accurately apply, apply concepts and th sorry, uh, students demonstrate an ability to really, and then data from a variety of sources. Yes, for relevance and reliability very judiciously. So it's not enough to bang in 50 references. You have to say, I got the inflation data from the CSO. I got the um, uh, paper on inflation from the Brookings Institution. I got the, the you know, all, all this kind of stuff. The fiscal, fiscal, uh, um, the Irish Fiscal Advisory Council gave me the data on demand, that kind of stuff. And um, so they accurately apply concepts and theories. So the theory of inflation, the theory of supply and demand in, in terms of housing, the theory of elasticity in terms of uh, taxation and so forth um, to from different sources. You can manipulate the data so you can turn into graphs, make a table, uh, uh, that kind of thing. Um, uh, and it obviously will all be correct. You know how to do it. And then you'll pre present informed conclusions based on the evidence. So the, the research question is here. You elaborate what's happening. And then at the very end, uh, you're able to say, based on the evidence, we can say that, you know, X, Y, Z. OK, so you've got the clear capacity to reflect. You can say, I found this out and this is how it has changed me. That reflective piece is really important, as we'll see in the marking scheme. So next. Uh, next slide, please. Great. So here's a here. I just wanted to give you an example of a line of inquiry. Thank God I got the spelling right. Right. So I'm studying something because I want to find out something in order to something. OK, so here's a paper on intangible assets. Now, intangible assets are uh, things like uh, licenses and research and development and brands. OK, but this is actually a paper from a PhD. Um, that I'm supervising at the moment. And so you'll you'll see that from your leaving certificate all the way up to a PhD and all the way up to the research uh, papers that I write myself, um, you know, I'm studying the impact of intangible assets on production, markup and MFP dynamics. Doesn't matter what those are, because I want to find out if their influence is growing and impacting firms in a heterogeneous manner um, in order to help my reader understand if intangible assets are enabling large firms gain greater market power thereby tilting the balance of competition towards larger firms. So there you can see, folks, there's two pieces of technical language in there. But apart from that, it's very clear what needs to happen. OK, and that's one sentence. If you do this, I guarantee you, you will make a much stronger project. Uh, and again, you, you can study the, the way this is formulated yourselves. Uh, if you click the link there at the end, um, it, it will be fine. So next uh, slide, please. All right, so this is the actual format of your, your response. So the introduction is 250 words. You can see outline the aims of this line of inquiry in the context of learning outcomes. Then there's a research process. So, you know, talk about the economic concepts, talk about the economic theory, I show the relevant data in a graph or two, or maybe a table, and then write a conclusion, 350 words, okay. Um, you actually have a Microsoft Word template that you can write into here. So uh, make sure to use that template. Don't vary the uh, formatting. It's very important. Um, and then you, you can see that you have to reflect on it. You know, what did you learn? How did you figure these things out? And then how do you communicate? You get extra marks for communicating. So if you write well, if it's very clearly understood what you're trying to do, if it's beautifully written up and displayed, if you're able to make points about uh, or if you're able to demonstrate your points about, say, housing or inflation or whatever, then you'll get a good mark. Fun fundamentally, this is all about you having a question, going out into the world, figuring something out, telling people about it, and then reflecting on the process. That is what research is. That's what research does. OK, and that's what actually every researcher does. We, we well, you know, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time. This is what I do. So how would I do this? I would structure this in, in, in this way. I'd give a quick introduction. Um, but 100 words, then talk about the key literature, um, um, you know, uh, 
you know, Kinsella says this, O'Sullivan says that, Houston says this, Smith says that, and, and just really show the reader that you understand what's going on. Um, throw in some some mo a model and some data. So you might say, look, you know, here's some data on housing or rental in in, in Ireland or in Dublin, and um, yeah, the theory of supply and demand suggests um, that that if you reduce the supply of rental accommodation, the price of rental accommodation will rise. And here's the line showing rental accommodation rising and so forth, right? You know, not not rocket science, obviously, folks, but but fundamentally something where where you should be um, you should be saying, you know, causal statements like will or may, you know, uh, so add your figures and tables in your findings. They can be graphical. They can be statistical. Write up a conclusion and then put in your references. Remember, the references aren't counted, um, which is which is important. So this this process, if you start with the line of inquiry, I am studying X in order to, you're going to get a good mark for the introduction because that that you can see I've highlighted there. The, you, you, you've actually you actually have the line of inquiry written in. OK, and then if you can talk about the research process, this is what I did. I went to the CSO. I got this data. Here's what it says. The data are very clear about um, the impact of inflation or, or energy prices on inflation and so forth. Um, and then you can write up you know, policy contribution. What does this mean for the Minister of Finance? What does this mean for the average household? Writing this up in a way that answers the so what question, that will give you good marks in the conclusion part because you can say presenting conclusions as they relate to the state of line of inquiry. It has to be built. Everything has to be built off this one question, this one very clearly stated topic. And then if you do that, you're going to be flying. Um, and then, of course, we have to talk about writing. So next slide, please. OK, so coherence. <clears throat> so say the line of inquiry is about Dublin rental markets. The theory should be connected. The data should be relevant. Um, uh, the research process is should be described and reflected upon, and that should then shed light upon your line of inquiry. So, for example, if you start the line of inquiry at the top, your research question, I am studying X in order to, that should give you some aims. I'm trying to find out more about rental prices in Dublin. That then gives you the source of data because you have to go find data on house prices and rental prices in Dublin. Most of it's going to come from the CSO, the Central Statistics Office, CSO.ie. Again, a lot of this is linked in, in my slides here. And then you then document that research process. Uh, you know, I went, I found data, I made a graph, I made a table, I found more stuff. You know, uh, I, 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 I ran a model, you know, I compared the output to a model maybe, and then you, 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 you show some conclusions and then you reflect. And the reflection should should reflect directly on the line of inquiry. So the reader should see this and go, oh, wow, OK, you know. So at the end of a, at the end of an essay, I very often like to mirror the start. I very often like to mirror the line of inquiry at the very bottom and going. So in this paper, I, I, I set out to find out more about housing prices. Uh, what I found out was that when you re reduce rental supply, housing prices go rental prices go up and my policy conclusions are the following so you're answering the so what question very very uh, uh, succinctly and clear one has to connect to the other be coherent read this for coherence and all will be well next uh, slide please so do you need to cover everything um uh the, I, I get this question a lot and the answer is 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 clearly not I don't think you need to um, the, you only have 1500 words or so. It's not clear to me that you're going to want to or need to study everything or cover everything. Um, I, I simply don't don't believe um, that's the case. Um, so uh, next slide, please. Uh, it is very important that you think in terms of economic models applied to data. OK, what's a model? A model is a complex or a simple way of structuring a complex topic. Um, you've seen models like supply and demand, monopoly, oligopoly. You might not have seen ecological or integrated models before. So for example, Kate Raworth's Donut Economics. So this looks at climate change and uh, uh, ecological ceilings, social foundations, and tries to really get a sense of how all these things connect up. And you can you can watch her lectures on YouTube. You can buy her book, or there's loads of other stuff going on there. But that's a really interesting model that you can start thinking about. You've all your teachers have also taught you a lot about supply and demand and other things like that. So if you want to apply those models, do. But whatever you do, make sure that this is applied. Make sure that you actually have the model um, um, uh, uh, referenced, and you understand what the what the predictions of this model are and how they relate to the data that you're going to see. 
Uh, next slide, please. So here, for example, is supply and demand, right? So supply and demand, basically, you've got a highly inelastic uh, uh, demand for housing. Everybody needs to uh, uh, live in a house, so the, the line for demand is very steep. And then you have supply of uh, rental uh, housing uh, falling backwards. In other words, it's going down. OK, so there's a collapse in the availability of rental accommodation in the last 12 months. So have a look there on the right hand side. You'll see the number of homes available to rent uh, in the middle of this year is it, it, it's it's very, very, very low um, um, relative to um, uh, Dublin. So uh, relative to the to, 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 to historical trends, you can see that it's been falling, 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 falling. Um, and a poor, a, a, at one point in this year, there were only 80 houses available for rent in the whole of the country. Um, and so, you know, it, it's down 80% of the year, 55% of the country. You know, what happened? Well, basically, lockdown happened. Um, a lot of the end of lockdown happened, and people's demand for new rental accommodation exploded. Um, so, a common political response is rent controls. Um, your teachers would probably have taught about, taught you about that. Rent certainty is a really good thing, and if you're in accommodation, you really, really want this. However, um, a, a really well-established fact in the economics literature is that when you impose rent controls, you privilege the people who are in the rental accommodation at that time. Time, and then you make it much harder for other people, much harder for other people to be to be able to to to, to access that rental accommodation because nobody's ever going to move. OK, controlling rents often creates an insider outsider system um, where those unfortunate to be in the open market lose out. So have a look there in, in uh, uh, about the uh, uh, um, and you can see there in changes in rents by mover and stayer uh, cohorts. You can see that the blue ones are the stayers. Their changes in rents in 2021 are very, very low. Right, so so less than 2%. They, they, the rent controls are working for them. Now have a look at the movers. Their rents have gone up by 10%. So those are the people at the very edge of the right hand of that graph. So these two graphs are a perfect illustration of why rent controls are a bad idea. And the theory says that rent controls um, are, are in general not good um, um, uh, for, for uh, functioning markets, and indeed they're not. Um, in, even though it's a highly emotive uh, 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 subject, the theory suggests something that's very clearly displayed. OK, so that's the kind of thing you want to be showing in your research uh, 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 part. You really want to show that this thing um, has some connection to the real world. OK, next slide, please. All right, what's a good source? Um, I very often get this. Uh, what's a good source? Is Wikipedia a good source? No. Is Investopedia a good source? No. Is the Central Statistics Office a good source? Yes. What about Eurostat? Yes. The basic way of thinking about this is if it's an official source, like um, uh, like the Central Statistics Office or the Central Bank of Ireland, use it and make sure you quote it. If it's from some random sort, uh, if it's from some random uh, 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 area, then uh, you know some 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 YouTube page or whatever, do not do not cite it. You know, uh, if you're citing a TikTok, something's gone wrong. OK, don't don't do that. Make sure you're using official sources. Uh, next slide, please. So good data, right? You need good data to answer your question. So you start here, you gather your data and then you compare it to the theory. So here's an example. OK, here's COVID related data. Maybe you're interested on the, of the about the impact of COVID on the Irish economy. This is, these are just uh, things that I gathered myself um, for for a research project, and you can see that there's an absolutely massive amount of data of, of data that's there, and I've annotated why you would want to look at it. the World Health Organization, the IMF, you know, uh, uh, Vox EU, Irish Macro Data, and so forth. There's loads and loads of places you can find data, but my key word here is official. Use official sources and use papers that have been published in journals, so peer-reviewed journals. If you're going to YouTube, you're going to Wikipedia, you're going to Investopedia, you're getting it wrong. Next slide, please. All right, referencing. Always cite your sources. Use two as a minimum. It, that's what the State Exams Commission says. I say use more. Um, think about it as a kind of a hyperlink, OK? If you don't know how to reference, don't worry. Scholar.google.com will cite it for you. You can click the cite link um, or uh, you can uh, watch a little video. If you click a link there, there's a YouTube video showing how we reference at the University of Limerick. Um, and I've already shown you a reference here. It's Booth et al. 2016. Um, so please reference. It's very important. Next slide.
Uh, next slide. Let's talk about writing. So if you are if you're 10 days away from doing from producing this, you need to really, really focus on writing. Make it's the key skill. The better you can write, the better you can convey your ideas, the better things will be in in the world for you. So next slide, please. So uh, uh, honestly, the best thing you can do right now is purchase Deirdre McCluskey's Economical Writing. I guarantee you you'll do better if you follow her rules. Um, the biggest difference between a good, uh, good and poor writing is the writer's attitude about the first draft, okay? Poor writers see a first draft as a triumph. Yeah, you're finished. Uh, the reality is it looks, it doesn't look great, okay? Um, good writers see the first draft as a sketch and that's all. Um, I, if you don't have time to buy the book or if you're, you're 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 busy, click that link there and that'll give you a summary of, of Deirdre's main ideas. This book is genuinely brilliant. I have a copy of it on my table at all times. I, I, I'm, I'm somebody, I've written a lot of books. I've done loads and loads of stuff in terms of writing. I'd write a couple of thousand words a week, every single week. And for the newspaper, I read this book on a weekly basis. I can guarantee you this will make you a better writer. So pick up the book or click the link um, and check you're writing your first draft. Make sure you check it against these rules. What you will find is if you apply Deirdre's rules, you'll be a much clearer writer and you will be much better able to uh, identify and, and clearly communicate your ideas to your reader, which will result in you getting higher marks. Next slide. All right, so here's a summary. Economic research is fascinating and really important. I've been at it for 20 years. I will be at it for 20 more. It's brilliant. Um, economics is never, ever, ever boring. Uh, think about last year. Last year, uh, um, we, we were grappling with the effects of, uh, uh, of, of uh, locking down our economy on, on, on COVID. Um, you know, it, it's December now, but it, it, it seems to be a million, mile, a million years ago. But in January, we still had COVID restrictions. January of this year. There were still COVID restrictions in this country, um, and it seems to it seems to have disappeared from our minds thanks to the Ukraine war and other things. Um, but we still are dealing with the effects. So economic research is important. The ideas of economists tend to affect policymakers twenty or thirty years after the economist tends to write. Um, and so uh, the ideas that we have are very, very important. And if we get them wrong, people suffer. So it's it's an important subject that you study. And it's something that I, um, I'm very privileged to be able to study, actually. Um, so you, you use the craft of research and economical writing to structure your answer. Make it your answer. Don't try to make it somebody else's answer. Make it unique to you and you're going to be fine. OK, next slide. This is the bit where I want you to ask me some questions. So if you have some questions, um, you please put them into the Q&A. There's a, uh, there's a um, Q&A function there. I'm sorry, I'm clicking it now. I can't see it yet. But uh, if you have a question, please do ask, and I will be more than happy to answer. We have about five minutes left. So um, I'm very happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, on your um, on your individual research project or on um, general uh, topics for you to look at. Um, but I think that um, while you're writing that, I, I think that one thing I'd like to really emphasize is just how important writing this stuff up is. Um, the the more you do it and the more effort that is put into the writing up of it, these things, um, the better you will actually be. It, it's really, really, really powerful. Um, don't submit a first draft of this. Make sure at least one other person, maybe your mum, maybe your dad, maybe a guardian, or maybe a colleague has read this um, because um, fundamentally, the more able you are to actually write this stuff up in a coherent way, um, the better you're gonna be. And I think that's, um, that's only uh, only to the good. So now let me just check. I don't know if this is working. Maybe I'm not looking at it right. Okay. Uh, or or maybe uh, people don't have any questions, which is uh, absolutely fine too. Uh, I'll understand if 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 you guys need to jump off to another class um, or anything like that. Okay. Well. Um, uh, if there are no new questions, uh, maybe maybe it's because you all have to leave to go to another class. I think that might be true. Um, if there are no new questions, um, what I will do is simply plug um, Dr. Kieran Casey's uh, uh, webinar, which is on Thursday at uh, um, 9.15 a.m. There's a link on um, 
LinkedIn and on Twitter. Um, he'll be talking about inflation, where it comes from, how you should think about structuring it. Um, and it's it's a very important topic anyway. And so hopefully you will be um, you will be um, uh, able and available to go and uh, watch that because it'll be very useful um, for you. And as I said, uh, this lecture will be recorded. It, it has been recorded and it'll be available for you online um, uh, for uh, your project as you develop it and the links will be available for you as will these slides. So uh, if there's no questions, um, I guess there aren't, uh, I will uh, thank you very much for your time and attention and I'd like to wish you all the best uh, in your Leaving Cert Economics uh, research project and in the Leaving Certificate more generally. Uh, we're here at the Kemi Business School, we're always happy to help. Um, and thanks again to uh, uh, Mary Houston, Josephine O'Sullivan for organizing uh, this event, to uh, uh, Chloe from the BSTI, and, uh, and as always, all of our colleagues uh, uh, who are teaching um, uh, you and getting you ready for this um, uh, leaping certificate uh, examination, because they do a lot of hard work that you probably don't see. Um, so I just want to uh, take a moment to thank them. All right, with that, I'll sign off and uh, thank you very much again.